Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Do you believe in monsters? They exist, you know. The Irish giant in the Museum of Trinity College, Dublin. Dwarfs, which are stronger and live longer and usually have strong passions and acute intellect. The fabulous monsters of Guiana near Lake Parima, sketched in 1663 by Joost Segelman in his collection of voyages. Those are just a few examples which will lend credence to the story we're about to hear. I saw it, Billy Lee. I, I, I saw it. I saw the thing. Take it easy. You're shaking like an aspen leaf. How come you even went near Dead Lake? Well, you know better. Well, uh, Things disappear there. What got into you? One of my heifers wandered away. I saw him grazing down toward the lake. I just plumb forgot about the, the stories and went after him. When I got within a hundred yards of him... The heifer was on the shore, drinking. And that's when it... It came out of the water and... And grabbed him. The heifer disappeared. He bellowed, Billy Lee. It was... Horrible. Our mystery drama, The Horror of Dead Lake was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars William Prince and Gordon Gould. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Feinhauser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Since the earliest times, monstrosities have attracted attention and have engendered the cloying fear we experience in the presence of the unnatural. The Loch Ness Monster, for example. Is it fact or fiction? The search for it still goes on. Cyclops? The monster with one eye? Oh, there undoubtedly was such a creature because there still are. Really. At a point where the nose sticks out from the forehead, there's a single orbital cavity with an eye in it. Well, in this tale, we encounter another deviant from nature when we discover the hideous thing that inhabits the dead lake. Claude. Yes? Was it all right? Not too grim? No, it was all right. I know how much you loved your father. He lived a long life, and he didn't suffer. The lawyer went over things and assigned them to me. The savings, the old house, that kind of thing. It was sad, come to think of it. But it's over now. You know, Polly, there's something I never told you because I'd forgotten about it. So had my dad, for that matter. Oh? A castle in Spain? A map where the treasure's buried? <laughs> you know, you're not so far off at that. My dad left me 50 acres of land near a small town in Florida, Orisville. Fifty acres? Mm -hmm. And with land down there selling for a fortune? Well, not this land. There's something funny about it. A long time ago, back in the early part of the 18th century, a certain Silas Baxter, an ancestor of mine, was, I kid you not, a pirate. Claude. He must have run a pretty good ship, because when he left the sea, he bought those 50 acres and built himself a castle. He called it the Captain's Doubloon. Castle? Oh, not a great big one, but big enough. The history of the captain's doubloon has been handed down from one Baxter to another. It was among my father's papers. I see. What I've been left is the captain's doubloon in a state of ruin, the acreage, and something named Dead Lake. Why? Because nothing lives in it. That's creepy. My father never had any interest in the property. I don't know if he ever saw it. But we do own a ruined castle and 50 acres of land. With a dead lake where nothing lives. That's right. 
Claude, we ought to sell it. I think so, too. You know, it's funny nobody has ever wanted to buy it. Maybe they did. But my father never said anything about it to me. That's late. Claude. Yeah? Let's go see it. You mean it? Sure. Florida's no big trip from Philadelphia. Can you get time off from your job? I think so. I could take off Friday, and we could have most of Friday and the weekend. I can't promise anything, Polly. The captain's doubloon is a ruin. Maybe the acreage is worthless. But what about Dead Lake? I'd like to know why it's dead. Wouldn't you? Yes. Tell you what I'll do. I'll telephone the lawyer who settled my father's estate. Maybe he can give me the name of someone to see when we reach Orisville. I don't think Orisville is much more than a widening in the road. I'm so excited. <laughs> a deserted old castle. A dead lake. Makes chills run up and down my back. <laughs> well, Mr. Mike. Uh, how are you, sir? Quite well, I thank you. Here is my food list. Uh, can you also obtain the chemicals I've written down here? Uh, oh, oh, yes, sir. No, no problem. I'll have one of the boys drive over to Black. Uh, well, I've got to pay him, of course. I understand. I will give you these. I have before. Yes, sir, you sure have. The bones. My goodness, what pretty coins. Solid gold. Mind if I ask you something, Professor? I mean, Johnny Reed was in here yesterday... He's scared white. A heifer of his wandered down to the shores, dead lake. And Johnny said some kind of thing. Grabbed it, dragged it under the water. Johnny said it fell with something terrible. Did you hear it? You know anything about it? It is wise to stay away from the lake. I do not go near it. I remain in the castle and do my work. Well, maybe not for long, Professor. You've been squatting there so long, I guess you feel you own the place. But the real owner's up to Doorsville Friday afternoon, Luke, tomorrow. Ah. A fellow named Baxter. Same as Captain Silas Baxter. He stole all them doubloons from the Spanish. Like these you just gave me. I have found a few. Well, where will you go? Baxter tells you to get out. I would have no choice. I would leave. He will discover that the property is worthless. Uh, when he goes home, I will return. Maybe. You got this idea of developing the land and selling it for home sites. You have tried to do that before, Mr. Billy Lee. <laughs> I sure did. Those persons I drove over to look at the land never did find their child. Quicksand. Not according to the sheriff and his men. They scoured, dredged the lake. All they found was some of the child's clothes. Yes, regrettable. The lake is dangerous. Why? There are unknown things in nature. It is better to let them remain unknown. Now, I will return tonight for my supplies. Oh, hello there, Professor. Good morning. Uh I tell you, Billy Lee, he gives me the creeps. Uh, he may be gone soon, Johnny. Yeah? How come? The new owner's arriving tomorrow. Named Baxter. I can't say I'll be sorry to see Professor Micah go. He's in league with the devil. You remember that parrot? Oh, I sure do. Grew to have a wingspan of ten feet. Mm. Vicious thing. I remember we all went out and gunned it down. A horrible thing. Where did it come from? His experiments? That was just an ordinary little old parrot, no bigger than a crow. You saw what it became. Micah did that. He's always experimenting with something. Look here. Hmm. More doubloons. Wonder how many he's got. Just a few, he says. Old Silas Baxter's supposed to have had thousands of them. But even if that old room's full of them, I wouldn't go near it with an army. Gotten over your scare? No, and I never will. That was the awfulest thing I ever saw, that poor heifer being pulled under the water by some thing. Now, what did it look like? What I saw of it was a kind of red color, round and fat, and it had uh, 
horns kind of sticking out in front like the uh, like feelers. There ain't no such thing, Johnny. Back up on that, Billy Lee. I saw the thing. Uh, you see the new owner's showing up tomorrow? That's right. His wife. I'm staying home in my room's upstairs. You take them over to their property? Well, I expect so. And let me tell you, stay away from the lake and keep them away from it, too. The room's lovely, Mr. Harrison. Oh, oh Billy Lee. Well, I'm pleased you like it, Miss Baxter. It's fine. I like your store, too. Oh, it really ain't much. Uh, just a general store. Got just about everything in it that's poked around your teeth. Well, it's very nice. Not bad for a one horse town. Of course, well, isn't much, but those of us who've been here all our lives, we like it. You want excitement. I'll well, ask you close by. St. Augustine's only 40 miles away. Nice country. We landed at St. Augustine and drove down. I enjoyed it. There's lots of pine, isn't there? Oh, sure is. Paper pub. It's big business down there. And cattle. He's a rancher now. Hi, Johnny. Oh. Meet Mr. and Mrs. Baxter. Hello. Johnny Reed. How do you Johnny do? Johnny Reed. How are you? You uh, really interested in the captain's doubloon, Mr. Baxter? Well, I don't know. It's my property. I might want to sell it off or interest some developer. I should think it would be worth quite a fair amount of money. You look skeptical, Mr. Harrison. Why are you shaking your head? Now, now, don't go scaring him, Johnny. That's just what I'm going to do. It's not fair to keep him ignorant. Is it... Is it Dead Lake? Now, how did you guess that, ma'am? Well, the name. There's something spooky about a lake that's dead. It's dead all right, except for one thing. There's something in it. Something I saw with my own eyes. And it's really something terrible. Oh, come on, Mr. Reed. I don't blame you, Mr. Baxter, for looking at me as if I'm escaped from the mental home. But a few evenings ago, one of our herd, a nice little heifer, went to the edge of the water of Dead Lake, and some awful thing grabbed it and dragged it under. A thing? What's a thing? Nobody knows, Mr. Baxter, but Johnny saw something. And strange things have happened down there before. Mm. Oh, and another thing, Mr. Baxter. For over 30 years, a squatter's been living in the ruins of the castle. A man named Micah. He was a professor. I'll tell you about him when we drive out. I spoke to him yesterday morning and said he'd probably have to clear out. He agreed, but uh, you'll meet him. A professor? And he's a squatter? What does he do? You'll excuse me for saying it, Miss Baxter, but I think he consorts with the devil. Oh, that's a little hard to believe in this day, Mr. Harrison. No, he's some kind of scientist, always sending for chemicals to Palatka to St. Augustine. He said, uh, now what did he call himself, an embry, embry, something or other? Embryologist? What's that called? It's a branch of science concerned with the formation and development of the embryo. Teratology is the study of deviations from the normal. By golly, that explains the parrot with the ten-foot wing spread. What? It's the truth. I can swear to that, Mr. Baxter. Half the village went gunning for it. He shot it down. Oh, it's not possible. Yeah. Neither is that thing that lives in Dead Lake. <laughs> What do we know about what exists at the bottom of the oceans? What prehistoric creatures live there concealed from our sight and knowledge? Monsters? Probably. There still are phenomena which we have not fathomed. What is that thing at the bottom of Dead Lake? We will encounter it when I return with Act Two. The subject is monsters. We seldom think about them, if we ever do, but there are monsters all the same. They are, in fact, studied in zoology under a special branch named tetralogy, concerned with deviations from the normal in the embryo. When deviations occur, the result can be a monster. 
primitive man believed that a monster was the result of a woman's act with Satan. Nonsense, of course. But the fact of the monster remains. What beautiful little birds you are. Uh, which one of you will it be today? I have grown attached to all of you, but it must eat. An immutable law of nature. One feeds upon another, and that is how I learn. And that is what I live for, to learn. The great plant must live, and it is a carnivore. <laughs> is right. The captain's doubloon isn't a castle, it's a heap of rubble. One turret sort of standing, the rest caved in. The person said, oh, smoke rising from the chimney. Strange smell. Acrid. It's the chemicals. She's always experimenting with something. Have you been here before, Billy Lee? Oh, oh not to go inside. Well, I've been around the grounds, but... Like the rest of us in Orisville, I don't feel comfortable here. Well, we've seen it, Polly. We should forget it and go home. <laughs> That's what the dog thinks, don't you, Binks? But we've come all the way from Philadelphia, Claude. We ought to meet this professor and see what it's like inside. And ask him about those doubloons he brings to Billy Lee for food. What do you say, Billy Lee? Well, I guess I don't have to say anything there. There's the professor now. Afternoon, professor. Good afternoon. Is this Mr. Baxter? That's right. This is Baxter. My dog, Binks. How do you do? Yes, the dog. I'm the legal owner of all this property, Professor Micah. I do not question it, Mr. Baxter. And I am an interloper. If you want to put it that way, yes. So, when it's convenient to you... Of course. I will gather my few possessions and leave. You've been here 30 years. Oh, longer than that. It is an isolated place. I uh, do my work here, my uh, experiments. Like that, uh, that monster parrot? I uh, told him about that, Professor. You remember how some of us in the village had to gun it down? Yes, I have not forgotten. A pity. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, killing sheep and almost dragging off a child. I mean, uh, the destruction of a master's scientific achievement, a, a phenomenon, proof that experiments in tetralogy can produce new breeds of animals that could change the face of the earth. I wonder if we might see the inside of the castle. You are the owner. Well, I don't want to inconvenience you. It is no inconvenience, but I caution you, do not wander away alone. I have experiments in many stages of development. Some of them are dangerous. A Venus flytrap is one of them. Though I know about them, they fly. Interesting little plants. Carnivorous. Uh, follow me. It would be wise not to bring the dog. I'll take him back to the car, Molly. Hmm? No, no, let me. No, no, no. Come on, Binks. You both get your fill of the castle. No, I'll be outside. Come on. Come on, Binks. Oh, my goodness. What's that thing close? It looks like a huge sunflower plant. And look at those pouches at the end of its leaves. They're bigger than a pelican's pouch. Much bigger and much more dangerous. It is a Venus flytrap. It can't be this small. But by controlling its growth from a seedling, I have created a new species. It is very powerful. Look, Polly, it's leaning toward me. And it's opening up. Oh, do not approach it, Mr. Baxter. If it should seize your arm. Oh, that's horrible. Claude, stay back. Well, that's the first thing that will go. I'll take an axe to it. Let's get out of here, Claude. You, you live here, Professor? Yes, in the ruined tower. Uh, this is my plant room. Is there a basement? Yes, but except for me, uh, the dungeon is unsafe. You've got more things like this? down there? My experiments are varied. Professor, please clear out as soon as you can and destroy these experiments of yours. That's Binks. But Claude, that's Binks. He sounds like he's been killed. Mrs. Baxter, all right? Yes. Yes, Billy Lee. Thank you. 
latch is still open. What happened? I can see by your face. They're dog. What? It wasn't anyone's fault, Billy Lee. Bink slipped his collar. No. And, and Ryan loose. Mm -hmm. Down the dead lake. I ran after him, but it's not in time. I saw it myself this time, Johnny. It rose up out of the water, a, a round, huge, slimy thing, and it dragged the dog into the lake. What is it? What is the thing? I, I, I never saw anything like it in my life. I, I don't know what it is, but it's probably one of Micah's experiments. We went there this afternoon. My wife and I went into Micah's room in the castle, and Johnny... It made my hair stand on end. Binks said the dog whined and wouldn't go with us. Billy Lee said he'd wait outside with the dog. I, I was taking him back to the car. He fought the leash so hard he slipped his collar and he flew toward Dead Lake. Ran after him, but by the time I got within 50 yards of the shore, something caught the dog and was dragging him under. If I was you, Claude... I cut my losses. I forget the place. No, sir. I'm going to get rid of Micah and find out just what makes Dead Lake dead. There's something in it. You caught a glimpse of it. So did Billy Lee. A big, fat, slimy thing with horns. Now, what is it? I know a man who might know. A friend who's a zoologist at the University of Pennsylvania. I've telephoned him for help. He'll be here late tomorrow. Then we're going out and solve this filthy, hideous mystery. Now that you've met Dr. Petty, let's hear what he has to say. You're on, Joe. I see everyone's well on. Well, there's something in Dead Lake, Dr. Petty. And if we catch sight of it, we're going to blow it to bits. Binks was my dog. I'm going along. I'm not afraid, and I can handle a gun. Well, all right. My plan, for what it's worth, Joe, is for all of us to go out there now. It's five o'clock. We ought to get there in half an hour. Then you and I will go inside and find out if Professor Micah has cleared out. Mm -hmm. If he hasn't, I'll throw him out. Then we'll destroy that awful plant. Once Micah's gone, all of us will explore that dungeon. Maybe that's where he's got the thing. You got any idea of what it might be? Uh... You described it as about six feet long, fat, slimy, with horns. Colored, a reddish kind of color. You know what it makes me think of? A giant snail. But they don't eat flesh, Johnny. Could it be a giant slug? I don't think so. I don't like to speculate, Claude, but since you telephoned me yesterday, I've been doing some research, although I don't believe all this. It's true, Dr. Betty. As a scientist, it's hard for me to believe, but I accept what you've told me. Why, Joe? What do you think it could be? A member of the Harudni, which is a branch of the Kaidabad worms. What? It's a worm? No, Johnny, but it could be a monster leech. One of those things that attaches itself to the skin. Yes. And... In Egypt and in the Near East, there's an aquatic leech that lives in streams and ponds and does extensive damage to horses and other baggage animals. Leech? Make my skin crawl, Joe. Well, they've been used extensively in medicine. In 1832, France alone imported over 50 million of them for bloodletting. And you think that's what the thing is that's in Dead Lake? It's hard to say, Billy Lee, but you've described the leech. Red-colored body, bloated appearance, slimy look. Of course, the fall of a leech five or six feet long boggles my mind. I simply can't imagine it. But if that's what the thing is, it could kill anything. Once those enormous suckers have attached themselves to any blood animal, the animal would be dead in minutes. Well, let's get started. Hey, we'll, we'll take my pickup, Chuck. We've got an arsenal. And dynamite. Dynamite? Sure. If we don't see the leech, maybe we can find where it lives. And that's not blow off this cape. People around here have a score to settle with that monster. <laughs> told you to get out, Professor Micah. So you did. And I will leave now. I have not had time... Out. You have a rifle and a shotgun. Why? We think there's a monster leech in Dead Lake. And we intend to destroy it. Fantastic. I want you out of here. I have packed what I can carry. 
The rest I leave to you in the name of science. Get out, Professor. I never saw anything like it, Claude. Look at those traps undulating and stretching toward us. He said it's powerful. That's the first thing we take care of. You have the shotgun, Joe. Look at it. Inching toward us. I'll release the birds. They're what he fed to the plant. Look at them go. Joe, call the others and we'll try the dungeon. Well, come with me. We don't want to be separated. You've got a point. What a devil's hole this is, Joe. Let's get the others. Glad I brought the axe. Did you see that thing try to wind itself around me? Some kind of vine? Strong as wire. It's awful down here. What's that over there, Claude? Shine your light. Uh, a huge door hinged with a drop lock. Do you think... Don't open it, Claude. She shoots. Mister, what's that? Sounds like something breathing underwater. Oh, wet, bubbly kind of breathing. There's one way to stop that. No, Claude, don't shoot. I've got a better idea. There is something behind that door. It, it's the thing, the giant leech. You won't kill it with one shot. Well, well, what's your idea, Dr. Petty? Well, that door must open into a tunnel. And the tunnel probably leads to the lake. Now, if we can trace the tunnel from above, on the ground, and see where it leads to, Johnny here can dynamite the entrance and block the thing in. That's when we'll have it trapped, and that's when we'll kill it. Good idea. Everyone stick together, and we'll go back upstairs and out. I never want to see this place again. You'll be all right, Polly, when we get out into the air. Come on. Walk between Joe and me. <laughs> Is it possible? In nature, most things are. And nature, with a prod from an experimental scientist, has created a monster. A giant, predatory, hideous, monster leech. I'll be back shortly with Act 3. ever had a leech attach itself to your skin? It happens not infrequently in many freshwater lakes. They are small and they can be flipped off with a finger, but the experience makes one shudder. Imagine the horror, then, of speculating that what Professor Micah has bred, the thing that has made the dead lake dead, is a gargantuan leech. I'll get the dynamite. Hand me the rifle, Billy Lee. Sure. I've had the shotgun. Oh, here's the other one for you, Dr. Petty. Right. Joe, let me carry it for John. I'd appreciate it if you'd stay with Polly. I'm all right, Claude. With just being in that filthy basement. No way, Polly. You're going to stay by the truck and Joe. Claude. No, absolutely not. I mean, Polly, I think he's right, Miss Baxter. I tell you what. Why don't you swing the truck around and turn on the light? And shine them on the north side of the castle. The lock face the doors on that side. Give us some light down to the shore, too. All right, Polly. Come on, pop in. Claude. No, please don't argue. You stay with Joe. Ready, Johnny? I'll lead the way. Keep your guns up. I'll be ready for anything. Joe, I feel sick. If the thing is what you think it is. Yeah, me too. Let me get the truck turned around. Black as a tunnel. I'll switch on the lights. I see them, Claude and the others. The car lights do run down to Dead Lake. Isn't that an awful name for it? It's dead, all right, if there's a giant leech in it. <gasps> Joe, look. What? Mr. Professor. Now, what the He's devil... returning to the castle, not through the front, but through the north side of it. I wonder what he's up to. He disappeared now. Must be another entrance to the place. If... Johnny does blow up the tunnel and the professor's in that basement. Claude ordered him out. I know that. All the same, he is a human being. I don't think he's a human being at all. Shine your big torch over the lake, Johnny. Shore cuts through the blackness all the way to the other side. Johnny, look. Something's moving just under the surface of the water. It's moving to the other side. Follow it. The torch. Look at it. 
Just a little of its back is out of the water like a whale. Keep following it. I can hit it from here. No, Claude, no. Let it go. When it returns from the other side of the lake. Oh, no. That's a small deer over there. See? The thing is coming out of the water. Go fire a shot, Claude. It scared the deer. Look at that thing. It's half out of the water. The deer got away. Johnny, follow where the thing swims. It's coming toward this side of the lake. A few hundred feet north of us. Come on. No, 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 no. Hold it. If it does have a cave or a tunnel to a cave, we don't want to scare it off. Just watch it. To the surface. And it's disappeared. Now, let's move. All set, Johnny? Yeah. Here. Back toward the castle. That's it. Look. Yeah. The force of the explosion in the tunnel lifted the ground above the tunnel. And now we can see its path. It does go to the castle. It goes to that bar door in the basement. We've got the thing trapped. Maybe it's dead. That was a terrific blast. We got to make sure, Claude. There's only one way to do that. We have to open that big bar door. Now what, Joe? I don't know. There was a big charge of dynamite. They must have found the tunnel. What about the thing? Dead, probably. Just the force of the detonation could kill it, but I don't know. Look, they're coming back. Maybe they'll tell us. There, that got their attention. Is it dead? Claude? Is it dead? I don't know. We hope the explosion caved in on the thing and killed it. But we don't know. And there's only one way to find out. We have to go back into the castle. Oh, no. We have to, Polly. You, you saw it. Enough of it, Joe. It's a leech, all right. A monster leech. How big, Claude? At least six feet long, round as a hippo, and reddish in color. When it came out of the water, it writhed like a snake, and its it, it blood-sucking cups, or whatever you want to call them, were bigger than half dollars. Mm. It's the most revolting creature I've ever seen. How in heaven's name did it ever come about? Experimental breeding and crossbreeding. Professor Micah developed gigantism in some strain of leech until he achieved one with monster size. But why would he want to do something like that? All scientists, Billy Lee, are fascinated by the subject of life. How it can be controlled and developed. He's in there, Claude. In the castle. Micah? That's right. The headlights from the truck picked him out just as he disappeared through some of those big stones on the north side. Well, then, we may have killed him. The blast. If that blast blew open that hinged door. Come on. Let's see where he went in. We'll follow him. Leave the dynamite detonating box here, Johnny. Grab his shotgun. You told him to get out, Claude. Why would he want to come back? Joe, I'm afraid. You stay here with me. There's nothing we can do to help. But if something... If something should happen to Claude, and it was my idea to come down here, he didn't want to. And now if something should happen... That could be it. See where I'm shining the torch? Yeah, it could be. Just about wide enough for a man to squeeze through. All right, follow me. Hold it, Claude. You bring up the rear. Now, wait a minute. I'm not going to have you risk your lives any more than you already have. Billy and me have the shotguns. Much more effective close range. You bring up the rear with your rifle. Right, Billy Lee? Right. I don't know what to expect, but whatever we find, it's bound to be close range. Now, let's go, Johnny. This place is a house of horrors. It ought to be burned to the ground. It will be, once we know that the monster leech is dead. It's Micah from that big room in the dungeon. Help me. Have your gun cocked, Johnny. And go slow. Look. Oh, good Lord. The leech. It's all over him. Move back, Johnny. Micah's dead. The leech is all over him. Shoot, Johnny. Near it, Claude. Some of the suckers are still working away. We have to get Mike out from under. He's dead, Claude. Get out of here. You can come back when it's daylight. Get Micah. 
hack that thing to pieces. Just have to, Polly. We're not leaving this truck. But those gunshots, what if they run into? I can't guess. You can, but you won't. What if that blast of dynamite blew out that hinge door? If the thing wasn't killed in the tunnel. Hold it. They're coming out of the front of the castle. See the flashlights? They're safe. Oh, Joe, they're safe. <laughs> You all right, Polly? Still feel a little faint. When you saw Claude safe returning to the truck, you passed out. I remember. Joe was right. Professor Micah had developed a giant leech. It lived in a tunnel which ran from the shore of Dead Lake up to a cave near the castle. When Johnny set off that blast of dynamite, the tremendous repercussion broke the hinges of the door into the cave, and the leech got out. Micah was there in the room. He was probably stunned by the blast. That's when the leech grabbed him. There was nothing we could do to save him. It must have been awful. It was a nightmare, Polly. We're returning there in the morning. So am I. Polly. No, Claude. I got us into this and I'm going to see what's in that room. And the return to the captain's doubloon. I uh, don't feel much like going down into that basement again. And I'm not sure it's safe for Miss Baxter. Don't you worry about me, Johnny. Now that I know the monster leech is dead, I'm not afraid. All right. But let's go into the front. Have we got everything? Lights, ropes, and my shotgun. And just in case. And camera. Watch your footing, Polly. And when we go down into the dungeon, stay between us. Uh, let me leave, bud. I've uh, got the gun. There it is. Poor old Micah's under that thing. Oh, aim that big light right, right at it, Johnny. Uh, it's incredible. It's six feet long and four feet thick. Micah let out one scream and then he was dead. Hardly frightened, maybe. Keep the light trained on him, Johnny. We'll try to pull him free. Well, let me take a few pictures first. No one's going to believe this horror. Claude, what about Professor Micah? What happens to him now? We give him a decent burial. And Joe wants to find out, if he can, why Micah did all this. Billy and I searched the castle. One tower, still partly standing, Micah had a room and his books and a small laboratory. Yeah, there were a lot of papers and chemicals. But the real discovery was this diary. It goes back 40 years, back to 1931, in fact. Under an October date, listen to what Michael wrote. Today, I was discharged as an assistant professor of zoology because I was consulted by a friend whose son was certain to die from acutitis. I urged the man's doctor to attempt a transplant. The doctor was repelled by my suggestion. I explained that in zoology, I had conducted many experiments in which I have saved small animals with various organ defects. My suggestion was rejected, and so was I. I have left. I intend to continue my experiments somehow, somewhere, well, south probably, but at least I will have the climate in my favor. And one day, I am convinced the name of Micah will be honored for his proof that life can be prolonged and improved. There it is. And a lot more. Poor man. He wasn't really mad. He, he just felt rejected. And because of his bitterness, his experiments became grotesque. <sighs> Through that huge parrot, for example, he intended to prove to skeptics that man's magic, science, could reshape mankind and his environment. He was an intellect, and far ahead of the time in which he lived. And the giant leech? Like the parrot, another proof of what Micah maintained, control of life. And 
both got out of hand. I'm going to publish Micah's papers, Claude. And I'm going to burn the captain's doubloon to the ground, make that land habitable again, and stock Dead Lake with fish. That horror is gone. Nature, with a little help from me, will restore it. Nightmares are made of such stuff as a dream about a monster leech because the word makes the skin crawl. And when in sleep, a fiend or incubus oppresses you, wake up. It will go away. But was it real? Or just a nightmare? I'll be back in a moment. It is foolish, I think, to dismiss anything. Was it conceivable years back to imagine men walking on the moon? Is the notion of a huge killer shark unimaginable? We know a great deal about Earth, something about the universe, but isn't anything, or almost anything, conceivable? Monsters are, and our story's giant leech was one of them. Our cast included William Prince, Gordon Gould, Ann Shepard, George Petrie, and Gil Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Who is it? Till next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>